calling all members of the in crowd. If you want to get in on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com or slide in our DMs on IG at Fade Route Podcast or drop us a line on X at Fade Route DNZ. You can find us on Facebook, The Fade Route with DNZ. We're on Spreaker. We're on YouTube, The Fade Route with DNZ. Catch our videos. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and spread the word. Order up! It is time for us to order up. Order up, order up. For those of you that follow, it's officially here. Pitchers and catchers have reported spring training is here, which means opening day is right around the corner. However, we have plenty of top quality Major League Baseball free agents that are still unsigned. So we are going to order up our top available free agents in Major League Baseball from five to one. Who you got, D? All right, well, you know, first up, I'm going to keep it easy. I'm going to keep it real. And I'm going to say Clay Bellinger. Like, I'm Cody Bellinger. I know... Last year was an outlier. I know the days of him fitting 50 50 home runs are over, but he's still a solid outfielder. He can play first base. He can tear the cover off the ball. He can bat 250, 260. And maybe going back to the Cubs is the answer. But that that he he's who I got at five, right? And then at four, I got Jordan Montgomery. World Series winner. Played for the Yankees. I believe he had a 2.83 ERA, of course, across 98 innings last year. You know, he's a lefty. He brings a lot. And uh I I per I think he I think he I liked him on my fantasy team last year. I like the way he pitches. I like the way he plays. Number three, this one is I'm surprised this guy is still available. How about J.D. Martinez? Can I interest you in 100 RBI? Can I interest you in that? Because that's what he had last year. I think he had 104 RBIs. He's still a good hitter. It's his primary job nowadays. And I think the Phillies would be stupid not to add this guy to their lineup because this is what the Phillies do. They just smash the cover off the ball. Number two is your boy, Matt Chapman. uh, Third baseman. 30 years old. I think he had 26 home runs last year. Solid player. Solid player. And number one, I can't for the life of me figure out why this guy is still available, but it's Blake Snell. I mean, reigning Cy Young Award winner. Uh, lefty. Can pitch in the big moments. I, you got to add him to your team if you're in need of a starting pitcher. Pretty good choices. Pretty good choices. I mean, Snell is... Snell, Snell, Snell. Snell is scary because you're looking at... Yes, there's a 2-2-5 ERA, but he's also not that far removed from a 3-3-8, a 4-2-0, a 4-2-9 ERA in... 2019 like some of his numbers are scary so he had a great year he was hoping to parlay that into a big deal and clearly that has not materialized Cody Bellinger same thing right it's surprising that he's still on the market but the previous years scared people off And I understand that. I get that. I I see where you're coming from. So, that's why I think that I got to go with Whit Merrifield at number five. Mm -hmm. Two-hit Whit. 
con- <laughs> con- contact hitter, right? This is that's what he does. He, I would argue he's this generation's Michael Young. Wow, that's a compliment. My- Michael Young was a stud, and so is Whit Merrifield. Like right? the same way Michael Young played in relative obscurity in Texas, Whit Merrifield played for years. Remember in Hank Blaylock? Oh my God, Hank Joe. Yes, yeah. not Henry Joseph. Hank Joe on his birth on his birth certificate. So, you know, Hank, those early 2000s Rangers teams or the, like, you know, like right around the, when they got A-Rod and then he fucked everything up. <laughs> and see, the first time he went to a team and fucked something up, you know, they were building something with Teixeira and Michael Young and Hank Blaylock. Like they had something there. And then A-Rod went with A-Rod and cooled everything off. But Whit Merrifield is versatile. He'll play the outfield. He can play the infield. You're pretty much guaranteed a 270 to 290 hitter, right? In an era where we're trying to add more contact, he steals bases. I don't know. What more do you want? Whit Merrifield, you know, he's a, he's a stud. He is an unsung stud. Number four, and this one. Yeah, this one might be a little bit of a, of a reach, but when this guy is good, he's very good. You know, Brandon Woodruff from the Brewers. Like, yeah, I get it. He's coming back from injury and he's going to be rehabbing. But when you look at this guy and you have the opportunity to come go and get him, I, I find that, you know, it's a little bit, you know, easier to deal with. His rookie year, he had an ERA of 481. Hasn't come close since. You're look, the highest was 362 back in 2019. Th- that same year, he was 11 and 3. It was on the All Star team. So he's entering his age 31 year. He's coming off. You, he's coming off a year where he's 5 and 1 with a 228 ERA. He only started 11 games. So. You'll see. It could be a, a make good. It's a low. It, it's a low risk deal, high reward. I would argue for Brandon Woodruff. <sighs> Number three, I gotta go with JD Martinez. Yeah, he, yes, he's thirty six. Yes, he's a DH. No, you don't want him in the outfield. <laughs> but. Or to babysit your kids on a Saturday night. Well, whatever. You know, whatever you need. Well, whatever you're afraid of with J.D. Martinez. It's probably, it's probably well-deserved. But 33 homers, 103 ribbies, 271 batting average. What more do you want? Yes, he, he was a late bloomer. Okay, he was a late bloomer. His age 26 season, that's when he took off. His age 26. He's had 10 years of extremely solid production. 2020, I think we discount 2020, right? He only hit seven home runs. He only played 60 games. And even so, you know, he only had, he played in 54 of those 60 games. So, you know, take it for what it is. He's a consistent power bat in a league that needs consistency in terms of power. Jorge Soler is off the board. He went to the Giants. Why not? You know, the Mets can use him. Lots of teams can use a guy in the middle of the order who provides the thunder. Number two is Matt Chapman. Not only... You know, is he a solid hitter? Solid, not great. 240, 17, and 54 in Toronto is not is not great. When he was in Oakland, he was much better. So he he has pop, he has demonstrated that he can hit between 27 and 36 home runs. For me, what really intrigues me about Matt Chapman is that he's not only a four-time gold glove winner. He is a two-time platinum glove winner. So you know that you're getting stud defense. 
you are getting elite level defense from Matt Chapman. And it's surprising that he's still out there. Now, he was linked to the Cubs. Didn't make much, didn't make much sense. I just, I don't see a home, you know? Maybe he lands with, maybe he lands with the Mets on a one-year deal. Maybe he lands with the Guardians. Like, you move Jose Ramirez off a third. Maybe he lands, you know, somewhere on a make-good contract at this point. Maybe he ends up back in Toronto. I really, like, it's a huge question mark. And it's so surprising because he's a very, very good player. It's that elite-level elite, elite level defense is what takes him over the top. And number one for me is Monty, Jordan Montgomery. Mm. I think he came into his own in recent years since leaving the Yankees. Like, he's developed more into like that bulldog type. Yeah, overall, he was 10 and 11 last year between St. Louis and Texas. But he really developed into that bulldog Andy Pettit type that the Yankees hoped he would be. You need a guy like that. And he's got playoff moxie. He's got the playoff pedigree. He's he's done it, right? He's got the pelt on the wall now that the Rangers have won the World Series. And it doesn't seem like there's a reunion coming anytime soon. And I find that interesting. The Rangers are done spending. But I think that Jordan Montgomery would be a fine addition to any major league rotation. The question is at this point, what is he, what the, what's the offer going to be? Is it another one, another case where he's going to have to take a short-term deal to kind of figure out what he wants to be and what he, where he's going to go. You know, he and Snell are around the same, they're around the same age. They're both entering their age 31 season. So Snell's coming off the Cy Young. But Monty's coming off the ring. I guess it all really just depends on the eye of the beholder and what you feel your organization needs. But I'm still taking Monty over Snell. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.